All right, one of the challenges, of course, is to increase the share of the private sector's contribution to the Chinese economy. Zhang Nini is still with us. We're still in conversation with her. Uh, one of the topics, and you touched upon this in your first answer as well, is to try and encourage private capital to enter more sectors. The challenge, of course, is how will they then take on uh, the vested interests that are posed by some of the state-owned enterprises who have huge amount of clout here in China? Uh, well, China has pledged to reduce the entry barriers for private investment, and in some fields, this policy is taking effect. Uh, a good example is in the burgeoning internet financing sector, and led by the Alibaba Group, many internet firms are now providing new financial services, and uh, the third-party payments tools is one of the earliest forms of such challenges, and it's fast becoming a very popular one. According to the official figures, about 80% of the online transactions last year were done using these tools and now uh, not only Alibaba is providing its Tencent Holdings and WeChat also have similar services and meanwhile the in the investments uh, options this is previously guarded by the uh, traditional banks but now internet firms also get to participate in it a good example is the you about a, uh, a deposit product with high returns from the Alibaba and meanwhile the internet companies are also pro uh, opening small loan business for for the uh, SMEs, and uh, many hope that the, after the third plenary sessions, private investment will be allowed in, in some previously monopolized fields such as energy, telecommunication, and railway. New services to fill a growing need in the financial system. Small and microfinancing usually gets lost in the sheer size of the banks, but that's starting to change. And it's not the banks that are leading the way, internet firms like Jingdong are stepping up. When small business owners are given a nose in banks, they might get a nod here in Jingdong. China's second largest online shopping website is to provide microloans to its distributors and suppliers. So when banks won't lend, this could be the alternative to keep your business running. Jingdong's suppliers and distributors can get funding more easily based on their credit history and account receivable records. Jingdong's growth is exponential. Our stock turnover is five to seven days, so we need to purchase frequently from suppliers. Many of them may face a cash flow shortage and can't provide the stock, so we provide loans to facilitate their capital turnover. With its huge customer database, the internet firm holds an advantage unmatched by the traditional means. It also differs from bank lending, which require collateral and other conditions that small enterprises can't meet. And Jingdong is not the only industry player. China's largest e-commerce company Alibaba Group Holding Limited gone the furthest. An Alibaba small and microfinance service group has extended loans of over 100 billion yuan to SMEs and individuals on trading websites. Search Engine Baidu and Suning Commerce Group have also foraged into the sector. The new service won't overturn a traditional model, but experts expect it to hold its own. First of all, I think it'll challenge our system of management from central planning to market-oriented, for example, and interest rates. The burgeoning of Internet companies means that regulation cannot be based on geography any longer. At the same time, we hope that more private capital can be encouraged to enter previously monopolized fields in banking and futures and insurance. The much-needed dose of competition is expected to benefit the system as a whole. Jingdong's new branch will open in Shanghai. Company executives are confident the favorable policy environment will give it a head start in the business. Zhang Yini, CCTV, Beijing.